Well, good morning. So we'll be looking at the control of cancer in a cell cycle and how the loss of the cell cycle control results in cancer today. So the essential processes of the cell cycle are controlled by the cell cycle control system by a series of different processes in the cell. And this occurs via protein kinases called cyclin dependent kinases. The activity increases and decreases throughout the cell cycle and can lead to control of different phases of the cycle. To give an example, increase in cyclin dependent kinases activity at the beginning of mitosis leads to increased phosphorylation of proteins that control chromosome condensation, nuclear envelope breakdown and spindle assembly. So the most important of these CDK regulators of, of proteins known as cyclins. So cyclin dependent kinases have to be bound to a cyclin molecule in order for them to have protein kinase activity. Four you need to know, cyclin D, cyclin E, cyclin A and cyclin B. So cyclin D causes G, G1 and to move to G2 and G to then to move to the S phase. Cyclin E causes the cell to prepare for replication for in the S phase. Cyclin A activates DNA replication in the S phase. And cyclin B prepares cell for mitosis which causes mitotic spindles to form. Here's a wee diagram showing how the cyclin binds to the cyclin dependent kinases and how this results in an active protein and basically cyclin being destroyed. So cyclin binds and activates the cyclin dependent kinase. Cyclin dependent kinase activates the target protein that regulates cell cycle and then the cyclin is subsequently destroyed, destroyed. So here's another example of what happens when there's no cyclin and when there's cyclin present with S and G1. So I can see the, and if there's no cyclin present, the factors are off. And when the, when it is present, the S phase begins. The DNA replication enzymes are then activated. So you can see here what happens when the binding occurs and CDK is activated. So you can see here as well for the plus M cyclin. So how the CDKA, CDK binds to the cyclin, CDK is activated. For the M phase targets, are phosphorylated and then this results in M phase beginning. So the spindles form, chromosomes condense, and the nuclear membrane breaks down. So here's an example on the right hand side of nuclear membrane breakdown, etc. A further diagram looking into the different check phases and how the metaphase checkpoint, the G2 checkpoint, and the G1 checkpoint, etc. Yeah, you can have a look at this in a bit more detail. So cyclins are regulated by control-dependent inhibitors, cyclin-dependent inhibitors such as P21. So you can see here the M phase, the G1 phase, the S phase, and how P21 binds to different cyclins. Sets so P21 binds to cyclin B, cyclin A, cyclin E, and cyclin D to control different phases of the cell cycle. These are also then in return controlled by oncogenes and tumour suppressor genes such as P53. So a key point to note about P53 is this is a this is a key cells cells key response is DNA damage and this activates cyclin dependent inhibitors, activates DNA repair and triggers apoptosis. So what happens when we lose control of the cell cycle? So cancer is a new growth of cells that is uncontrolled. The proteins that usually regulate the cell cycle no longer function properly. So old cells do not die and instead grow out of control. These extra cells can form a mass of cells called a tumour, or they can metastasize to another part of the body. Cancer can be distinguished from other diseases in that it is not a lack of functional cells that causes disease, but rather cancer cells that produce at a rate far beyond the normally tightened and regulated boundaries of the cell cycle. Very important here about different types of cancers, you've got carcinoma, lymphoma, leukemia, sarcoma, melanoma. So carcinoma is the most common, originates in organs and glands. Lymphoma is cancer of lymphocytes, white blood cells, immune cells. Leukemia is cancer of the blood, does not usually form solid tumours. Sarcoma is cancer of connective tissues such as bone, muscle, fat, blood vessels. Melanomas are cancers that arise in cells that make the pigment in skin. So metastases are the real danger to be honest with this and this is where cancers can spread. So common carcinomas occur in the lung, leukemia is in the bloodstream, lymphoma is in the lymph node. Sarcomas in the fat, bone and muscle, etc. 
Once again, looking at benign versus malignant, so benign involves abnormal growth of cells that do not metastasize, but this is not known as cancer. Malignant is when malignant cells invade neighboring tissues and get into the bloodstream to spread to other parts of the body. These crowd out healthy cells and draw nutrients on bodily fluids. With regards to malignancy, it is really the primary cancer itself that kills a person. Cancer cells can spread and colonize other tissues. Invasion and metastasis are the main features that discriminate benign from malignant disease. So here the malignant cells are deal through a blood vessel wall. Malignant cells travel into tissue at new sites. Malignant cell divides to form metastasis at a new site. So cancer cells can bypass normal proliferation controls and colonize other tissues. So here you can see a patient with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, etc. So how does cancer develop? So cancer is a multi step process. It arises from the accumulation of mutations in various genes controlling cells growth and or cell death. A mutation is a change in sequence of DNA base pairs. A single mutation is not enough to change a normal cell into a cancer cell. There are two types of mutations. Acquired or somatic mutations which occur in a person's lifetime and are only in certain cells. These are caused by environmental factors or through aerogenic replication. And there's also hereditary mutations which in all cells in the body as they were inherited from the parent. So somatic mutation or sporadic cancers are most common. These usually occur later in life. There is no clear pattern on one side of the family. Inherited mutation cancers make up 5 to 10 percent. They usually occur earlier in life. There's a clear pattern on one side of the family. And for example, the BRCA1 gene, tumor suppressor gene, in which mutations in the BRCA1 gene can cause breast cancer. That's how family members have a high risk of inheriting. Proto-ontogenes are genes that code for normal proteins used in cell division. Growth factors, membrane receptors for growth factors sibling proteins. This is also known as a gain of function mutation. Tumor suppressor genes are genes that code for normal proteins that help prevent uncontrolled cell division by blocking key steps such as DNA replication. Example is a P53 gene which, which is mutated 50% of cancers. This is known as a loss of function mutation. DNA repair genes are key for apoptosis which is a mechanism of cell death. So you see here, normal cell signal mutation event results in proto-ontogenes being converted to ontogenes and the activation mutation enables ontogenes to promote cell transformation. So oncogenes are dominant and only need one copy need to be, is needed to be mutated for a phenotype to happen. And with regards to the other one, the loss of function, this is normal cell, so the mutation inactivates the tumour suppression gene. There's no effect on the mutation in one gene copy. And then this results in an activation of the second gene copy. And then two inactivated mutations functionally eliminate the tumor suppressor genes, promoting cell transformation. So tumor suppressor genes are recessive and both copies must be mutated for a phenotype to happen. DNA damage is referred to as a physical or chemical change in the DNA. And these are non-lethal genetic damage can lead to gene mutations. Examples of DNA damage. So endogenous sources such as cellular metabolism, reactive oxygen species byproduct of electron transport chain, activation of phagocytes, exogenous sources such as pollution, alcohol, tobacco, smoke, heavy metal, and DNA oxidation. So what happens if the DNA damage is not repaired? So cell death occurs by apoptosis, proliferation is stalled in replicating cells, known as senescence, and the DNA sequence of a gene is altered, so it's mutation induced. So what can cause DNA damage mutations? So cellular metabolism, so as I said before, reactive oxygen species byproduct of electron transport chain, activation of phagocytes, peroxisomes byproduct of lipid metabolism, exogenous sources such as pollution, alcohol, tobacco smoke, heavy metals, transition metals, industrial solvents, pesticides, certain drugs like allophane, paracetamol, and radiation. So this is a bit more about how the different stuff that can cause in DNA damage mutations. So some we mentioned before, UV light, radiation, occupational carcinogens such as asbestos, bacteria, viruses, parasites, alcohol, smoking, diet, obesity, and our microbiome. Looking at the types of cancer causing agents in the workplace, this involves asbestos, construction workers, leading to lung cancer, benzene from petroleum, rubber, chemical leading to leukemia, cancer of the blood, uh, lead or dust, shoemaking, nasal bladder cancer, Nephilamine, chemical workers, bladder, vinyl chloride, 
there's also liver cancer and wood dust. For furniture, there's also navel, nasal cancer. So, causing cancer causing viruses in the humans, these include Epstein Barr virus, which is also in Burkitt's lymphoma, human, papil human papilloma virus, which is also in cervical cancer, hepatitis V virus, which is also in liver cancer, and human T cell lymphotrophic virus, which is also in adult T cell leukemia.